Yeah, praise the Lord. Good evening. Can everybody hear me? Okay, fine. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Good evening, brothers and sisters. The Lord has brought to the last chapter of First Corinthians, and we are so thankful to the Lord. The 16th chapter of First Corinthians. So let us turn to the 16th chapter and let us read the whole chapter alternately and at the same time keep praying in the hearts that the Lord would bring us into the fullness of all that he has for each one of us tonight and as we proceed to conclude, uh, the Lord would guide us. So let us read alternately. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do we. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. When I come, whomsoever you shall approve by your letters, them will I send to bring your liberality unto Jerusalem. And if it be meet that I go also, they shall go with me. Now I will come unto you when I shall pass through Macedonia, for I do pass through Macedonia. And it may be that I will abide here and winter with you, that he may bring me on my journey whithersoever I go. For I will not see you now by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you, if the Lord permit. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. Now if Timotheus come, see that he may be with you without fear, for he worketh the work of the Lord, as I also do. Let no man therefore despise him, but conduct him forth in peace that he may come unto me, for I look, sorry, I look for him with the brethren. As touching our brother Apollos, I greatly desired him to come unto you with the brethren, but his will was not at all to come at this time, but he will come when he shall have convenient time. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. Let all your things be done with charity. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruit of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. That ye submit yourself unto such, and to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth. I am glad of the coming of Stephanus and Fortunatus and Achaicus, for that which was lacking on your part, they have supplied. For they have refreshed my spirit and yours, therefore acknowledge ye them that are such. The churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Prisca, Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in the house. Verse 20, all the brethren greet, greet you, greet you one another with a holy kiss. The salutation of me, Paul, with mine own hand. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema mar maranatha. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Verse 24, 
My love be with you all in Jesus Christ Jesus. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word and add blessing to it. And may he enable us to hear his voice as he has already determined in his eternal purpose. So let us pray, look unto him and expect him to be the speaker. Gracious loving Heavenly Father, King of Kings, God of Gods, Lord of Lords, our so sovereign Lord, God and Savior, you have loved us eternally, O Lord. You have bought us with your very own Son and his life and his body that you gave on the cross, his shed blood, O Lord, and he removed all the wrath declared on ungodliness, sin, in obedience, disobedience, and rebellion, O Lord. And you have given us his righteousness, his holiness, and his sonship to us, O Lord, through this exchange on that cruel cross. Lord, speak to us tonight. Keep the speaker completely broken, humble, in the power of your cross. And you speak, O Lord, abundantly to us. Lord, we are so thankful. You are so loving. You are so kind. You are so faithful. You are more than trustworthy. O Lord, we commit this time in your hands. We commit ourselves in your hands. Lord, thank you. We ask all these in the most highly exalted name. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So dearly beloved, we have come to the last chapter of this First Corinthian, and in this last chapter, Brother Paul writes about the practical issues of present Christian living. In the first 12 chapters, he very lovingly, adequately, very firmly, he confronted the Corinthian believers, the Corinthian assembly. He, by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, he corrected all that is undesirable in the assembly life dearly beloved and he very clearly upheld the character of god primarily that god is love in the 13th chapter and there in the last verse very clearly he said now there abide faith hope and love but the greater of these is love and therefore dearly beloved and now abideth faith hope charity love these three but the greatest of these is charity in the, in the original greek is it is the greater one love is the greater of these dearly beloved what a wonderful consolation we have what a wonderful comfort we have that though we are weak, though we are failing, though we are in, as we advance in age, we feel all, all the 
uh, what should we say? If an old man, an aging man, or a lady just sits quietly and think, then one comes to know that life is so full of vanity, so full of trouble, so so full of tears, so full of all that men aspire after and finds to be at the end nothing. But when that one has walked with the Lord over a few decades, that one becomes sweeter and the bitterness goes away and all the character of God grows in that person, dearly beloved. So here we see that at the end of this book, at the end of this epistle, the last chapter that we study, that is coming in reality in the flesh, in the body soon. But the whole intention of God's word is for the present time for the believer to prove the victory, the triumph of Jesus Christ in this life right now on this side of eternity, on this side of the grave, those who are going to depart, dearly beloved. So it is very important. When we read the 16th chapter, if we do not know the rest of the episode, we think that it is too dry, it is, uh, it is just practical, but dearly beloved, it is not so. When we have understood, according to the word of God, that if we do not know the word of God, if we do not know and understand God, if we do not know the power of God, dearly beloved, then this chapter becomes an impossibility. No one can practice these things apart from standing in the ground that we saw. The ground is the life that is Christ. The ground is the resurrection that is Christ. The ground is that the Holy Spirit himself brings us into the reality of the resurrection and the life that is Christ moment by moment. And so to say, to speak, this 16th chapter is the normal Christian behavior. It is a normal Christian life. It is the normal Christian relationships. It is the normal Christian outcome, dearly beloved. And this is the fruitful life, dearly beloved. This is the spiritual life. And so, dearly beloved, remember, this chapter is not cut off. It is not in isolation. It is not standing alone by itself. This is what is, dearly beloved, when all put together, the wonderful work, the living of our Lord and Savior for 33 years, the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom of God, dearly beloved, remember, it is the gospel of the kingdom of God. And the evangelicals have turned it into the kingdom of, in the gospel of the fall and salvation. It is not only fall and salvation. Dearly beloved, the Lord Jesus very clearly says, the kingdom of God. When John the Baptist said, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. The Lord Jesus very graciously took up the same message and the same words. He did not decorated with any other thing 
nothing. He didn't add anything to it. He didn't say, no, no, John, you are preaching repentance. So this is the gospel of repentance and the gospel of this. No, the Lord repeated the same words and said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. So dearly beloved, the 16th chapter is the kingdom behavior. The behavior of the people who are royal priesthood. So remember, this is very good, wonderful. So we do not, when we, now when we read any word of God and we try to understand anything, we have to begin with the triumphant shout that we live in the era, in the age of resurrection, dearly beloved. And as the days are darkening, as the days are becoming more and more ungodly, as the world is now going towards its own destruction, we are going towards glory. So we began with grace and we are on the way to glory. And this is, the 16th chapter is, the glorious life, the glorious life of the believer. And very clearly, Colossians 1.27 very clearly says that Christ is, is the hope of glory in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is not I living, my living, dearly beloved. It is Christ in us. And this is the glorious. God wants to see his son alive on this earth right now. The head that is in heaven is speaking, looking, listening, working with hands, walking with feet, loving with the heart, dearly beloved, with the life that is Christ. So remember, we are the hope of glory. That's true, but who? Christ in us is the hope of glory. Not ourselves, but Christ. We have so much have crucified ourselves. Our life is so much crucified, completely crucified. Our life is so much of denial, self-denial, that we have nothing to live. And all that lives in us is Christ. All that lives in us is Christ, dearly beloved. So this is not this practical issues of present Christian living, issues, not as problems, but issues as coming out. Issues, as we say, how many issues do you have when a man and a woman are married? After a few years, they are asked, how many issues? If they don't want to defend, offend them about, have they got girls, have they got boys? But they just want to say issues. So issues means you're living together, you're loving together, and you're married like what is the outcome, dearly beloved? What is the life that has come out? So these are, these is the living things. These are the living expectations, expressions, and dearly beloved, remember, these are the expectations, expressions, and the experiences of the living body in a local church. This is the living body in a local church. Once again, I say it is the living ex expression that is Christ, dearly beloved. It is the living experience of Christ among us. We, we must experience Lord Jesus in each one of us. This is nothing but Christ living in his variety of expressions. 
dearly beloved, in each believer, in each family, because we read about believers, we read about families, we read about the leaders, we read about the team that is working for the Lord. Oh, dearly beloved. And so how they are reacting, what they are doing, they are thinking of other assemblies that are far, far away. Corinth is in Europe and Jerusalem is in Asia. And Jerusalem, because it's the Jewish heartland and the Jewish believers are much oppressed and persecuted by the non-believing Jews and they have become poor. They are robbed. They are taken, their rights are taken away. Their property is taken away. And they, have, they are so much in need of great help. And so, dearly beloved, this is the expression of the, of the love of Christ, of the compassion of Christ to the other believers, to the other assemblies, dearly beloved. So this is what, let us rejoice in the fact this, how wonderfully the life of Christ, the living Christ, expresses himself, how he loves and how he lives in and through each believer. Oh, dearly beloved. So this is not just a cutoff or side, uh, a, a side, something aside. No, no, no. This is the organic organism that is coming out, budding forth in flowers and fruit and fragrance. Dearly beloved, remember, as the tree grows, the fruitful tree is the fruit tree. It go, it, it buds. Then the leaves come, then the flowers come, then the small fruit, then the fruit growing, and then the fruit ripening, and the fruit being enjoyed by the ones who have, dearly beloved, sown it, planted it. The Lord wants to satisfy himself. Remember, he wants to satisfy himself by the expression of his love to him by each believer. Let me tell you one great truth. In our worship services, he wants every time, every time, believers filled with an overflowing cup of them, themselves, over bubbling, overflowing cup of their love towards their God, their Savior, oh dearly beloved. So when we read this, when we have lived like this in our daily walk, then, in our daily quiet time, we would be able to satisfy our Lord, dearly beloved, by a real, natural, spontaneous overflowing of love towards Him. He wants to see that love. He wants to drink that love. When He went and He sat at the well, of Saitar, what did he say? Woman, give me a drink. Woman, give me a drink. He knew that the lady was dry. He knew that she was, her life was worse than any desert, any desert. Any well that is dried up, clearly beloved. This is what human life is, family life is, or so called assembly life is, if it does not know to be the drink that the Lord is looking for. The Lord is looking for a drink. A drink of ourselves, dearly beloved. 
filled with him, filled with his life, filled with his love, filled with his light, filled with himself, dearly beloved, dearly beloved, the Lord God is taking us back to the beginnings before the foundation of the world, even before he created the angelic beings, he began creation in his son. His son was eternal. His son is eternal. He never began. But when God began creating time, creating this universe, creating intelligence being, intelligent beings like the angels, and the human beings, dearly beloved, he began with his son. And at the end also, he wants nothing but, nothing but, and no one but, please mark, nothing but, and no one but his son. So this is the 16th chapter, is the expression, the experience, and the expectation of his son, dearly beloved, being living and overflowing to himself, dearly beloved. Remember, let us all be very quiet. Let us all be very, very humble. Let us all, because we, one person cannot do it fully. Therefore, he has given us a wife. A husband, children, family, so that daily we may express him. He has not given us just one family. He has given us several families in the local assembly so that together, together, as much of Christ as we could, no one can express Christ fully, wholly, completely by himself or herself. No family could. But dearly beloved, the assembly can together because we can say, 1 Corinthians 2.16, we have the mind of Christ. We have the life of Christ. We have Christ living in us. No longer I, but Christ. Oh, dearly beloved, it's not I have the mind of Christ, but we have the mind of Christ. So this is the mind of Christ in the 16th chapter that in his the intentions of his thoughts. The Lord God in his son, in the intentions of his thoughts, he is saying this, dear beloved, brother Paul, Saint Paul is saying to us that there are, according, there are four parts we can see in, as we read. In the first part, in the first four verses, verses one to four, it is the giving. It is the giving, the issue of giving. It is the issue of giving. Issue, I say, what? The spontaneous, natural sharing, dearly beloved. The sharing of what? Physically, materially, a person can share with other believers and believers, other assembly and assemblies, dearly beloved. The, the first issue is the giving issue means the spontaneous fruit, the spontaneous outcome, the spontaneous reaction of the believer is what can I give? What can I give? Why? I am given. I am the given one. And now I have to be given. So first of all, when we are the given, that is to say, we are given Christ in us. And Christ never remains ungiven. As soon as he is given, he makes us to be given. Dearly beloved, let us understand. These four verses do not describe just the giving of money, parting of something. No, dearly beloved. It is the very natural, the spiritual, what is spiritual in a man, the whole of God given into us, dearly beloved, we know whole of God, 
whole, all of God. We know Colossians 2 9 that He is the full given of God bodily. He is the full, see, for in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And when He is, when God is in the fullness of Godhead bodily in Christ Jesus, in that body He gave all of God. All of God. So dearly beloved, what God primarily did, first thing that he did was giving his son. For God so loved the world that he gave. See, what did we, what do we, very, very simple thing. He gave. He gave what? Oh, what? He gave whom? His only begotten son his only begotten son and first peter chapter one I, I forgot the verse which says we are begotten of god we are begotten of god just as christ is begotten we are begotten of god and when we are begotten we should be the given ones god gladly Eternally, lovingly, gave, gave, and is still giving. So dearly beloved, these first four verses that talk about the giving issue, the giving issue that is the fruit that naturally comes out, that grew, that grows is giving because God as far as we are concerned as far as the creation is concerned outside God he gave God has been giving his son from the moment of creation remember that giving of God started from the moment of creation and it continues. It continues. Dearly beloved, may the Lord take us into the depths of understanding the intentions of his thoughts, the intentions of his thoughts and his purpose in the giving of himself in his son. And may we understand it deeply every day as we sit in our quiet time before him and may we bring to him all that has been given and we are giving when we worship him daily in our meditations and corporately together when we come to him on the lord's day each issue each issue Dearly beloved, would bring satisfaction to the heart of God. Each issue will bring the satisfaction to the heart of God in the expression of His love, of His Son, and the experiences of that among His children, among His sons, of one another. As one another one another experience the expression of Christ in, in and through each believer around. Dearly beloved, there will be that spontaneous worship and singing and psalms and everything. Nothing of repetitions, nothing of the rhythms and the percussion of the drum is no dearly beloved the music that rises is wonderful it is the rising of the holy spirit that lives in the believer and expresses christ much more and more and more and the holy spirit does not express himself but the Son. 
and the son does not do it but he comes it comes and brings all the fullness of godhead dearly beloved may we understand this this is working all the time may we understand may we rejoice may we calm down sit down in a corner and just close our eyes and come to the, the, the reality of the spiritual life that is Christ that is given that is giving and giving and giving so dearly beloved the first aspect is from verse 1 to 4 is the giving then verses 5 to 12 dearly beloved this love is reaching out the reaching out love of God the reaching out love of God it is doing God's work outreach outreach for the souls whom he wants them to be in his flock at this moment so this is the outreach the Lord when the Lord gave the Lord God gave his son as soon as he became 30 years old he came out to reach out he came out to reach out and he came repent for the kingdom of God is at hand dearly beloved so verses 5 to 12 is doing God's work in God's way doing the Lord's work in the Lord's way not in man's way not in man's way dearly beloved may we understand it giving given giving and so we are this is the second aspect of giving giving the revealed son the life of the son to the world the second part we can say that this is the life of the son we are giving to the world by preaching the gospel dearly beloved another part another issue that is given the son is given to the world see dearly beloved the son is given to the father in our worship we uphold him we give the same son when we have given dearly beloved only then that life that in us and we go out and when we see the lost souls in the lost world that life automatically that is christ reaches out dearly beloved enables us to go enables us to reach out enables us to see the the individual and the lord enables us to be the gospel bearers and we become personal workers we work we, we become the the giving ones of christ personally personal evangelism we can say so dearly beloved dearly beloved so let us understand this 5 to 12 is doing god's work in the lord's way yes doing god's work in the lord's way then verses 13 to 14 we have to be giving and giving and giving let us read that verses 13 and 14 together they are very good for us and so this is for to be the uh, who what is given to us who is given to us that we have to see to it that we are guarding it giving giving guarding that which is given verses 13 and 14 guarding that which is given watch ye stand fast in the faith quit you like men means what act like men be strong let all your things be done with love see with love that is christ once again the last that remains is greater than greater of them all and that is love once again guarding 
who is given to us we are given christ so we have to be watchful we have to be alert we have to stand fast in the faith we have to act like men it's not act like men really beloved uh, to take out our swords and guns and fight no here we have to act like men to live christ to be like him dearly beloved all crucify self denial dearly beloved that's acting christian that is acting christ the acting christ is always always when he lived and as man in the likeness of sinful flesh his mind his heart was focused on only one place in the world and that place was golgotha golgotha his mind his heart was set on giving the ultimate giving dearly beloved so we have to be focused on are we the giving ones all the time are we giving that which is given to us or that whom it is given to us do we have christ overflowing we should not become empty we must have him more and more so that when we give out we are not emptied of christ we are emptied of self emptied of flesh emptied of the world emptied of sin all that goes emptiness and more of christ more and more and more of christ how by being filled with his holy spirit all the time his holy spirit so we have to be spiritual christians spiritual christians means our spirit must be filled with the holy spirit and according to first peter 122 the last part first peter 122 the last part see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently see see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently so seeing ye have purified your soul in obeying the truth to the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently it is very important that we must come like this dearly beloved that this this reaching out this reaching out is not preaching not preaching that is to say to to say people improve yourself do this no it is required yes it is required in exhortation but it must be christ it must be christ dearly beloved always coming out to the one that we are speaking with the one we are dealing with so dearly beloved it is very very important that we come to know this first peter 122 seeing that a very important and so this we must know and we must know this fully completely holy that we have given ourselves so uh, once again god came out giving when we when we do the god's work in god's way so we see god's work is uh, people the lord uh, the man asked what work should we do i think in john 5 or john 6 then he said do the works of faith faith now what is faith christ so when we have to give christ dearly beloved 
we have to have Christ. We know it very well. And he is given to us. So God came giving and he has given and we are giving. So this uh, Lord's work is giving Christ. And then it is to be done in Lord's way. So what is Lord's way? Lord's way is Christ Jesus because he says, I am the way, the truth and life. See, always it goes back to Christ Jesus. Only in his way. In him, that is. We cannot give gospel without being in the way that is Christ. In the way that is Christ himself. So remember, first of all, verses 1 to 4, giving. 5 to 12, giving to the world. First of all, what we say, giving. How, how is it given one to four? When we know and when we have and we remember the Lord scolded them. Oh foolish people, you don't know. He called the, the Sadducees foolish people because they did not know the word of God. They did not know the power of God. But we are given the power of God and all that. And then we give ourselves to him. The issue of giving, remember, one to four. When we have given, once again, I'm repeating, Christ to God expressed him, given him, overflowing to him in worship and adoration and in devotion. Then we become the giver of Christ to the world. That is verses 5 to 12. Then we see verses 13 to 14 as we read, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit you means act like men, be strong. Dearly beloved, let all your things be done with love. So guard that which is, that whom is given. Guard the Christ in us. We have to guard the Christ in us by watching ourselves. Are we living a crucified life moment by moment? Are we living a life of self-denial moment by moment? Are we in unbroken relationship with God all the time through his son under the Holy Spirit? So once again, our spirit must be filled with the Holy Spirit and our soul must be given to God who is the creator. We must give our soul to God who is the creator. So souls must be given. Dearly believer, remember that. Two things God is, God is taken care of already. One, he has saved our spirit. He has made our spirit alive. And he will transfigure I'm using the word transfigure and transform the bodies, our bodies, our bodies of vanity, our bodies of all death into the body just like his, that he's going to do. But for our reward, the prize, the expression that God wants to see of his son in us is the surrendered soul the soul life he that keeps his life shall lose it and he that gives his life will find it it's in look and every gospel self-denial is the denial of the soul life. Self-denial is the denial of the soul life. So we must see to that. Our soul is saved. It is very, very important. The soul is being saved. So it is the process of sanctification. It is the process of sanctification. It is the process of becoming like our Lord in all aspects of our personality. Dearly beloved, 
This soul life is the life of our personality. The soul life is the life of the individual that each one is. Dearly beloved. And God wants to see that each individual soul as he has <coughs> already intended in creation. Each soul is different. Each soul will be different as God has designed it. And he wants to see this soul in a unique way, in a very, very peculiar way to be like his son, but different in each individuality we will be like jesus we will be like we will be the replica of jesus christ our lord but we will not be remember factory produced products in a mold coming out of the mold no we all will be in a very unique way, very, very special way, bringing out Christ, living Christ, expressing Christ to his Father in such a way that he will see, Romans 8, 29, that he is the firstborn among many brethren. Oh, dearly beloved, this is what he needs, wants. 13 and 14. That love. Really beloved. Look at the world. Look at each flower. Look at each fruit. Eat and drink the juice of each fruit. They are all sweet. But they are so different from one another. They are so beautiful. But they are so different from one another. It's a variety. Oh, dearly beloved, when we get to heaven and when we see Christ in us, the hope of glory in the eyes of the Father, when we see the twinkle, the twinkle in the eye of the Father as he would, as he would look at us, each one of us, we will see him and we will also enjoy the each twinkle that, that his eyes would twinkle. As it looks at one and each, each one of us, dearly beloved, remember, these are nothing. These are nothing but the foretaste, the foretaste of heaven in this body of vanity right now. Thank God, what a rejoicing we have right now when we understand, when we when we are under Him, when He's giving us His thoughts. These are not my thoughts. They are not in any commentary. You will not find. Never. These are his thoughts that is bringing out. Really be that. So let us rejoice. Let us enjoy him. Dearly beloved. Giving. And then being given. And thirdly. Whom is given. Who is given. Is to be guarded. Is to be guarded. And then uh, the great thing that we did here is uh, this, that uh, submit to, uh, sorry, um, the 13th verse and the 14th verse again, because I, I mean the other chapter, sorry. With watches, stand fast in faith, act like, be strong. That is it. Be strong. It's what? Have him solid not not a Christ that is hardly being seen but Christ that is strongly expressed daily beloved the expression of Christ must be strong the experience of Christ in one another must be strong not what should i say not uh, liquid i forget that word that not dilute not dilute but strong 
What does it mean? When there is expression of Christ, what does it mean? The brother was, one brother was talking wonderfully. Magnify the Lord. And he said, can you magnify the Lord? In magnification, we understand that when we look at a little thing, we put it under a magnifying glass and we magnify, we magnify that thing more than it is. It is not for with Christ like that, dearly beloved. When we magnify Christ, we see him as he is. We see him more and more as he is eternally. We cannot make him bigger than he is. Because there, there cannot be anything bigger than him. Nothing bigger than him. Remember, magnifying God, the Lord Jesus, is growing into more and more comprehension of who he is. Now, when I say who he is, first of all, it concerns God. Who is Christ in the heart of his Father? Go there deeper. Ask the Father. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead us to the Father. O oh God the Father, your Son is so beloved to you. You love him so much. May we understand, may I understand, O oh Lord, the depths of your love for your son, the grasp of your, the love and the mind of your son, the heart of your son, how much you know your son, in and out, fully and completely. Lord, I cannot. I am very limited. This is my regret. Really, this will be our regret. Net and not any other. That I am not perfect, I am not this, I am not that. That will be because we are like that until we die. But we must regret. Lord, I do not know you as I ought. As, I, as much as I should. Oh, dearly beloved. Let us grow in knowing him. Second Peter 3.18. What does it say? Even in the land and in the end. 2 Peter 3.18, what does it say? But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. But grow in grace. Growing strong. That is growing strong in the Lord. Growing in the knowledge of him. That knowledge is not gaining, knowing means increasing our, our thoughts. But knowing him as the Father, as the Holy Spirit know him, dearly beloved. You and I do not know ourselves, cannot know. But the Lord Jesus known him, knows himself because he is God. So may we know him as he knows himself. May we know him as the Father knows him. May we know him as the Holy Spirit knows him. And may we know him as he wants us to know him, dearly beloved. Let us be humble. Let us be quiet. So here I would stop today. Once again, the giving. Then the giving to the world and guarding that which is given, that is Christ. Amen.